Here is another topic that uh, tells you how complicated things are in a real life. Nuclear power is considered clean, doesn't emit CO2 during its production process, but uh, probably you know from your own uh, views uh, whether nuclear is acceptable to people in general because of safety concerns and so on. And then there is the life cycle analysis uh, which people have done comparing uh, hydro, wind and nuclear for example and nuclear does better than hydro in terms of life cycle emissions of greenhouse gases uh, but does worse than hydro for example. Uh, here are several articles that appeared in the conversation which is an incredibly good uh, media outlet that uh, scientists write in with usually based on their papers. Uh, so the first one is optimistic uh, and uh, uh, supportive of nuclear power. So it says the future of nuclear power stations could make hydrogen heat homes and decarbonize industry and of course also argues that renewables and battery storage alone may not be able to make up the demand for green power. So there are uh, <clears throat> There is a wind farm, a solar farm, and the lithium-ion energy storage. And the argument also is that there is something called cogeneration, which is uh, a way to make nuclear power more integrated. So here, for example, uh, is a nuclear power that produces electricity, goes to the grid, but that can also be used for uh, seawater uh, desalination, uh, direct air capture, and hydrogen production. So these are kind of cold temperature processes. And the radiation can be used for medical isotopes and radiation chemical synthesis. Of course, each one it will require uh, cost-benefit analysis and net emissions and so on. The warm uh, temperature uh, uh, benefits of nuclear, uh, the uh, rejected heat can be used for thermal heating, district heating, process heating and direct air capture, hydrogen production and seawater desalination as well. Another uh, report from the Royal Society uh, looks at it also similarly in terms of <coughs> electricity, high temperature heat, then low temperature heat, uh, cogeneration of energy flow in these dashed lines and nuclear power energy flow in these um, solid lines. So you're going from nuclear reactor, uh, high temperature steam, uh, to drive turbines. You can also take that to uh, for creating energy storage as chemical and heat which can then be used uh, to kind of avoid intermittency for example. Uh, so energy storage is always useful for that. Then drive a turbine and then feed it to electricity. Uh, High temperature steam can also be used for the industry. Similarly, energy storage can also serve the industry and the turbines uh, <coughs> can uh, serve low temperature steam, district heating and uh, the other loop can come back to industry as well. So these are kind of trying to integrate nuclear power into more uh, use of the waste generated as well. But you probably are already uh, aware and have your own opinion about uh, how to store nuclear waste and so on. But there are other issues as well. Uh, for example, this article in the conversation also argues that nuclear energy isn't a safe bet in a warming world and here is why. Why? Basically, when you think about nuclear uh, power plants like this, uh, they need to be away from population centers and typically close to uh, coasts to uh, have the required uh, uh, distance, uh, land and also water availability and various other criteria. And this uh, says it's not so safe considering the rapid sea level ex uh, rise we are facing everywhere. So this is the Mihama uh, nuclear plant in Japan. You can see it's fairly close to uh, water level. And you remember the Fukushima Daiichi accident in 2011 where <clears throat> a tsunami uh, happened, uh, I mean an earthquake happened which is a perfectly natural hazard. and 
it generated a tsunami which also happens but then the tsunami went and damaged the Fukushima Daiichi power plant and then ended up killing uh, many people and having long-lasting impacts on Japan's uh, psyche about nuclear power as well. So in general it's argued that even with radical action on climate change some sea level rise is guaranteed. So how do we uh, integrate nuclear power into this uh, condition of warming temperatures, sea level rise from glacier melt and thermospheric rise and so on and so forth. <clears throat> and remember that even if we drive uh, rapidly towards net zero and goals of 1.5 degree C and 2 degree C warming targets by 2100, the committed warming will give us some sea level rise along the way. Uh, conservative and sea level rise will mean uh, excess uh, additional storm surge and inundation when storms come in or when tsunamis happen and so on. Uh, this other article uh, also hammers the conservatives in the UK. Conservative nuclear fusion by 2040 pledge is fantasy. Their record on, their record on climate change is too little, too late. So uh, they have they have promised that nuclear fusion by 2040 is going to meet a lot of the requirements for climate action uh, in UK's plans and the nationally determined contributions. And UK has done very well in terms of reducing its energy intensity of the GDP and uh, carbon intensity of the energy and so on. Um, but there is also a lot of optimism about uh, nuclear fusion. Uh, we were talking about nuclear fission before with radioactive waste and so on. Um, so fusion, the nuclear reaction that powers the sun and the stars is a potential source of safe, non-carbon emitting and virtually limitless energy. Harnessing fusion's power is the goal of ITER. I don't know if it's pronounced ITER or ITER. It's a Latin word which means the path, which has been, ITER has been designed as the key experimental step between today's fusion research machines and tomorrow's fusion power plants. Uh, 35 countries, 35 years is the plan under it, ITER. So ITER members, China, uh, China, the European Union, India, Japan, Korea, Russia, the United States have entered into a 35-year collaboration to build and operate ITER device. A two-decade research program is planned during which the members will share in the experimental results and in any generated intellectual property. Very uh, <clears throat> optimistic panel in general. International efforts towards clean energy, climate goals are always laudable. Uh, but one has to remember the caveats as well. Going back to nuclear fission, uh, it's now been proposed that instead of these big nuclear power plants which raise all kinds of uh, flags for people in terms of safety, nuclear waste and so on, it's argued that these modular small reactors can offer safe uh, nuclear power as well. So there are several small reactors that are already operating. So here are the names, here are the capacities in terms of megawatt electricity uh, capacity. So go from 300 down to 35 or even 11 uh, megawatt electricity uh, capacity. So this is a pressurized water reactor, this is pressurized heavy water reactor, I think this is uh, uh, light water graphene cooled reactor and so on and so forth. So there are other high temperature reactors with some uh, other cooling methods and so I won't go into the details but you can see that they are operating in Pakistan, China, India, Siberia, uh, Russia and so on and many are under construction in Argentina, China, China uh, and Russia. So this thing is going forward. So this debate about nuclear being safe, clean, uh, good for climate change or not, or if we are overestimating its value and so on will continue. But uh, nuclear continues to be part of the portfolio of energy of uh, a clean energy portfolio for the future. So this UK uh, article argues that the 
allure of fusion makes it a good distraction from the failures of the current government's science and climate policy. Uh, somewhat of a good caveat to remember because fusion is still not there. Uh, the incredibly high temperatures even of the order of tens of millions uh, of degrees centigrade makes uh, uh, plasma in the reactors which uh, have to be stabilized and there are various experiments going on and exciting news come out that they uh, made it stable and produce sustained energy for a few seconds and so on. It's like the one giant step uh, for a man and uh, one step for a man and giant step for humanity kind of thing. So if fusion does become successful, stable, uh, then it will obviously offer a massive uh, way forward in terms of clean energy uh, that is uh, really limitless. Uh, okay, <clears throat> so this is an article from the International Energy Agency that looked at nuclear power 10 years after Fukushima. Uh, so you can see that uh, there was a bit of, so this is electricity generation in terawatt hours. A bit of a drop here and then a slow recovery, but in the meantime, wind and solar and wind plus solar have uh, gone uh, gangbusters and have made great progress even though most countries the contributions from wind and solar is still in the range of 20 percent or less except maybe for a couple of countries like Denmark and Sweden or so small countries which have done well with uh, renewables uh, in terms of installed capacities in uh, gigaton gigawatts growth uh, you can see from 2010 to 2019 nuclear in blue uh, has uh, essentially remained steady but maybe has recovered from the post uh, Fukushima uh, scare tactics uh, or not scare tactics but uh, scary scenarios and Germany is one country which has uh, completely gone away from nuclear has been uh, decommissioning its nuclear plants and has no plan to go back and there is very low support from German citizens for nuclear power whereas the neighbor France has a uh, huge reliance on nuclear uh, of course there have been issues in the past where nuclear waste from France uh, was stored in some of its colonies in Pacific Islands and the heavy cement bunkers in the uh, islands cracked and some uh, radiation was leaked into the oceans and so on and so forth. Uh, again here you can see wind and solar uh, are consistently increasing and are expected to do uh, uh, continue to do so. Uh, so the question is whether nuclear uh, is going to remain a uh, significant player, a key player, or at least part of the portfolio for uh, action on climate change in terms of a portfolio of uh, clean energy. Okay, so let's leave it there and just remember that nuclear debate continues, but it's likely to be around as a part of the key energy uh, agenda for a while.